Well, welcome back all you beautiful Bulletproof Handyman and women to the Bulletproof Handyman business channel. Today's video, get out your note-taking materials again. I do believe I've done a very good job of coming up with a set of information that's actionable that you're going to be able to use to get yourself clients and to get yourself clients very quickly and more importantly to get yourself high quality clients because if you don't get high quality clients you're not going to have a high quality business you're not going to have a high quality income uh, something I want you to keep in mind throughout this video and throughout your process of trying to acquire clients keep this in mind you are the architect of your own destiny what I mean by that is, imagine being an architect for the house that you're going to build and live in. If you're the architect, you're the one designing it, you're the one coming up with the plans, the processes, the budgets, everything. If you spend two hours doing that, architecting an entire house, and your business, I think, is even more important than a house. So if you spend two hours architecting your plan for how you're going to find clients, you're going to get what you put into it, right? You're the architect of your destiny, and you've decided if you put two hours into it that you're not too concerned about your destiny, you're not too concerned about what clients you get or if you get any at all. So keep that in mind. I'm going to tell you exactly how to go get high-quality clients, but you do have to put the time in. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with no clients, too few clients, or low-quality clients. So, without further ado, we're going to jump right in. There's a list of things that you need to get done before you look for clients because you're not just going to go out there and just try to rustle up some work. We're trying to run a handyman business here, not just to be a handyman. We're not just a guy running all over town hoping to find some work to pay some bills this week. We're trying to build a business and we take that seriously. So the first thing you want to do may sound silly, but it's not going to cost you much money and it's not going to take you much time is you need branding and you do actually need branding if you just show up as ray duke at somebody's front door saying hey i can do some work if you got some money if you do that you're not going to go anywhere you know unless you're just you might be so amazing that you just can't help but to accidentally get repeat clients who want to compete for your services but that's not very likely so the first step very easy step is just to get your branding. There's a uh, smashing logo is one website that I've used. I've used a few others. I made my branding for this channel as well as for my handyman business utilizing multiple different online AI branding tools. You can get your entire brand kit and that means your your actual logos, your colors, your fonts, transparencies, everything sized for social media for different social media sites sized for everything they will get you an entire package I think the package I paid for and this was two years ago the package I paid for was somewhere in the ballpark of a hundred dollars which is almost nothing and I have an entire package here on my computer a whole file that has all of my branding that I can just drag and drop into brochures, into business cards, into YouTube thumbnails, doesn't matter, anywhere I want to use that branding. And that gives your business a sense of professionalism, a sense of being an actual business. Because what is the business aside from you? The business without you and your face shaking someone's hand, when you remove yourself from it, the business is whatever your branding is. So you want to be careful about that and get your branding done and put it on everything and be consistent with that branding over time. The next thing I would like for you to do, and again, you, you don't have to do any of these. You can just throw an ad on Craigslist if you want, but you're going to get what you pay for. The next thing is you need to have a, a website, and that's partially for the website. However, you're not trying to drive traffic with your website. The idea is not to optimize your SEO on Google and get as many phone calls coming in as you want because those phone calls that come in and those emails that come in when you're just optimizing a website, those are random. You haven't curated anything. You haven't gone after high quality clients. You've literally just done a shotgun approach across the internet. And that's not going to help you out a lot other than just to get some kind of work. But you don't need some kind of work. You need high quality work for high quality clients that you can stick with and grow a relationship with in the long term. 
So get your website and know that when you get your website, the purpose of this website is simply a landing page. It's so that when you approach the clients that you want for your business, if they go check up on you, they can type in your website and they're going to land on a professional looking page that's going to once again comfort them and make them feel like, okay, I'm dealing with a business, not just some guy. Now, when you get your website, there's actually one other really important purpose to the website, and it's not the website itself, but it's the webmail hosting. It's your email hosting. So, for example, this is the Bulletproof Handyman business channel, right? So I have BulletproofHandyman.com. You can go check out my website. I got it on GoDaddy. It took me... Uh, <laughs> two or three hours at most to create, maybe four even if you include the time I spent just going and searching through pictures and logos and stuff to upload. But for a half a day's work, I got that website. But more importantly, I got the web host, the email hosting. The email hosting is so that, okay, put yourself in a homeowner's position or a realtor's position or a property manager's position. Who do you want to hire more? Somebody whose email address ends in at AOL.com or somebody whose email address ends in at BulletproofHandyman.com. If it ends in at their business name.com and you've got your own domain and your own email hosting, again, it makes them feel like they're about to do business with the business, not with some guy named Ray. Next, once you have your branding, go ahead and get your business cards and or brochures. Now, I've never used a brochure, but I do happen to know some people on this channel that I've done some coaching for over the phone have used brochures, and apparently they helped them out a lot, and they sent me a link to their brochure so I could check it out. Very nice brochure. Very, very nice brochure that they had. I'm not surprised it got them some work, but at the very least get your business cards so you got your branding your website your uh, hosting your email hosting and you've got your business card you've got everything all set up and ready to go and as I said before what we don't want here is shotgun approaches a shotgun approach will get you some business but so will a dedicated well thought through approach and the difference is one of these approaches is going to get you a shotgunning of customers of all types and shapes and sizes and income levels and the other approach is going to get you the customers you want so no shotgun approaches here and finally, if you want high quality clients, you need to sell quality. And I'm about to get into, just so you know, I'm about to get into the actual how-to, like step-by-step step what you're going to do. Just before I do that, I want to remind you one last time, if you want high quality clients, you have to sell on quality, on professionalism, on the idea that you are a business and not just a guy named Ray who's trying to pay an electric bill this week. So here's what you're going to do, guys. You've got all that taken care of. Now comes the part where you actually do the, the process of going and seeking out your clients. So what you're going to do, and it doesn't matter who your clients are. At the beginning of this video, or rather on the thumbnail, I mentioned property managers, realtors, homeowners, investors, commercial clients, and new construction. With the exception of homeowners, all of those other ones, that's where most of the money is. And with the exception of the homeowners, all of those other ones, those are business to business. Those are other businesses that need handymen to provide that service to their business. So your typical homeowner, they may. there are some homeowners who might hire you every other month out of the entire year to basically remodel their whole house. If you can get that, you know, good for you. That's great. If that's what you want to do and you can find those and you can charge good money and you know what you're doing, that's awesome. But otherwise, a homeowner is good for an occasional job. So although I am going to talk about how to get homeowners, the focus of this is business to business. That's where the money is. That's where the work is. That's where the consistency is. And these are the people that are, uh, let's say, for the amount of time and money you invest in trying to acquire these clients, your return on that investment is much, much, much higher, again, unless you happen to get lucky and find a homeowner who wants to basically employ you all year to remodel their whole home. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not growing a business for you. That's just getting you some work. 
So here's what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go through a list here. And by the way, this list is going to be available if you go to the description of this video. At the very bottom, you'll find something to click on to receive documents from me. Click on that link to receive the documents, and that's going to send you to where you can download these documents. And one of the documents you'll find in there, I don't know exactly what I'll title it, but it'll be something like the title of this video, like How to Get Clients. So I'm going to have all this on a document, so you don't literally have to write these down, although you can if you want to. But we're going to start putting together some paperwork into a package, because these packages are how we're going to sell ourselves. So the first thing you're going to want is your articles of organization. Assuming you're an LLC, I'm not going to dive into all of that on this video, but you should be an LLC. Your goal should be an LLC, and if you haven't started your business yet, just start right off the bat as an LLC and then keep everything business and personal finance wise keep that all separate separate bank accounts separate everything don't mix your LLC with your personal it's LLC means limited liability limited liability means whatever happens to the business does not happen to you it only happens to the business so if the business gets itself into trouble that doesn't necessarily get you into trouble if you're an LLC and if you've run your LLC correctly so your, your paperwork to show you're an LLC is called Articles of Organization. When you get an LLC filed, you'll receive your Articles of Organization. Put those in a file. Next, your state business license. Every state's going to have a business license that you have to get to do business in that state. They might call it a transaction privilege tax license. They might call it a business license, but every state will have one. Get yours print it out, get it in a file on your computer. Next, city business license, same thing. And by the way, if you live in some of these weird places where counties can require a business license, I remember when I was in Denver, there was some kind of weird little sub municipality thing going on in Denver. So if you were in certain parts of Denver, within the city of Denver, you could still need a business license for that little sub city. So whatever business licenses you have, all the way from state down to your local municipality, get that business license, all of those business licenses printed up and in a file on your computer. Next, any contractors or specialty licenses you have. This can even just be certificates of, of training, like from a local community college, but everything from a general contractor down to a specialty contractor, down to simple trade licenses, handyman licenses, or just, like I said, little certificates of training, anything to prove that you are licensed, that you're certified, or that you're trained in anything at all that you can come up with, get those printed, get those in a file on your computer. Next, you're going to print up your certificate of insurance. This is what you're going to show them. This is what you're going to give them to show them that your business is insured. And it's going to list off your minimums. Usually $1 million liability is acceptable to most places. I do find that counties, universities, states, much, much, much larger, larger organizations will oftentimes require $2 million liability. But get your certificate of insurance in that same file. Next, workman's comp insurance or a workman's comp waiver. So workman's comp you need if you have employees. And you also need, by the way, a lot of people are confused on this, you also need workman's comp if you have 1099 employees who you treat more like employees. Now this is a very big gray area, but suffice to say, I have read enough articles online and I've heard of enough circumstances where even though somebody may be 1099, if you're utilizing them on a daily basis, if they're expected to do whatever you ask them to do, when you ask them to do it, how you ask them to do it, they can be considered an employee, so you do need workman's comp. However, if you're sincerely just subcontracting out some stuff here and there randomly. They're not required to take the job. They're not required to do anything particular or wear a uniform or whatever. Then you don't need workman's comp. But most places will ask you either for workman's comp insurance 
or a waiver. The waiver you can typically find online. You can even make up your own waivers, but for most states you can find an actual waiver for that state that you print up and you fill out. And it's basically you making a statement and signing saying, I have no employees. It's only me, owner, operator. Therefore, I do not require workman's compensation insurance. I will add on as a caveat to that, one of the property management companies I do work for, um, and they're a very small one, I don't get much work from them, but they wanted workman's comp insurance even though I sent them a waiver. They said, we don't care, everybody has to have workman's comp. I went and looked it up online. Um, I think I got it through Next Insurance also, which there's a link for them down in the description of this video uh, to get a quote but I believe I got it through them. If not them, it was someone else, but I went for about three months. I had workman's comp insurance just for that company. Now, I don't do enough work for them anymore, so I dropped the workman's comp, and I haven't told them that I did, but if and when they send me another job, they tend to only send me big jobs. I think they've got a handyman that covers the little things, so they send me only big things, only infrequently, but uh, anyways, I dropped my workman's comp insurance, but I did have it brief and for me, for my little business that's just me and then my son doing a few jobs, um, it was like $50 a month. It was almost nothing. So again, if, if it makes you look like a professional business and it comforts your clients and causes them to view you as a reliable place to go for the services they need, $50 a month is not much money. Half of y'all are out there spending way more than that per month on Google ads uh, or SEO optimization and all of that. Next, you're going to write up an introduction letter. A lot of y'all have asked me to do sample letters. I'm not going to do any sample letters, guys. An introduction letter is just that. This is your opportunity. You can literally start it with the words, Hi, my name is Ray Duke, owner-operator of blah, blah, blah. And then you just talk to them, guys. Whatever it is that you think is your selling point, whatever value you think you have to offer them, let them know. Whatever experience you have, let them know. Whatever makes your business unique, just put it in this introduction letter. It can just be a paragraph or two paragraphs, half a page, doesn't have to be a lot. It's just an opportunity to have a cover page that says, Hi, my name's Ray. I love you. Please give me all your money. So write your introduction letter, put it in the same file, print it up. Next, list of jobs and skills. So also, guys, in the description of this video, in those documents, one of the documents that you can request is a uh, jobs list. Now, it says jobs list with pricing. There is some pricing on there. I'm not going to dive into the spiel I used to give about that. Ignore the pricing. Most of it's too low. You can use it as a jumping off point if you want. But otherwise, look at this list as just simply a list of jobs. This is a comprehensive list made from three years of me doing this job for property managers that I can honestly say is better than 90% of all the jobs that you could expect a property manager to send you to work on one of their single family residences. 90 plus percent of every type of job they're ever going to send is on that list. When you're approaching new clients, one of their very big questions for you is going to be, what can you do? What work are you good at? They need to know what kind of work they can send you if they want to send you work. So use my list. Go down and make your own list of everything on my list that you know how to do. And then anything I don't have on the list that you do, you can also add that. For example, I don't have things like furniture assembly. Property managers don't ask handymen to assemble furniture. That's something a homeowner might ask someone to do. So make your own list. Use my list to make your list and have a list of every single job that you do in your package. Next, pricing structure. Guys, you need to know what your pricing structure is. I just did a video called 2024 Handyman Pricing Guide. Uh, where I go over quite a few different pricing structures. Again, 
don't use my prices. My prices are based on my skill level. They're based upon my city that I live in. They're based upon a lot of different things where I have figured out for me and my business in this locality with my clientele, these are the prices that, that keep my business within this nice fair window where the work always keeps coming in and the money always keeps coming in and the jobs never stop flowing and I'm making more than I deserve for my time but you need to know your pricing structure they're going to ask it's best if you have it in writing and it's best if you're very familiar with it think it through commit it to memory so that if and when they ask you in person or on the phone to explain your pricing structure you need to sound like you know what you're talking about print that up put it in the file and then finally a little bonus here is for clients that you really want, if there's a few clients, like let's say you're going after property managers and there are three giant property management companies in town and you know for a fact you want to get your foot in the door with them, go ahead and go to your insurance provider your, for your business's liability insurance. Go to them and get an additionally, in, get, get the client that you're seeking Let's say the name of the client was Tucson Rental Properties. I don't have a business like that that I work for. I'm making it up. But let's say you wanted to work for Tucson Rental Properties. Go ahead and go to your insurer and get them additionally insured under your plan. And what this means is not going to cost you anything more. They may charge you like a one-time fee or something. Some of them will. The ones I've been with haven't. They may charge you some kind of one-time fee just to do that certificate for one time. But once you have it, you've got it, and it's got their name on it. So when you go to Tucson Property Rentals uh, in person to give them your package and talk to them and shake their hand, you can say, oh, by the way, I've also taken the liberty of adding you as additionally insured to my policy. This is just an extra level of guarantee that any damages that occur, any accidents that happen while you are working on their properties, that is you saying, my insurance is going to be responsible for covering this. And it, again, it makes you look more professional and it gives them this peace of mind that they're dealing with a business, somebody who has foresight and who has looked to the future, seen things that could happen and tried to prepare for them. So that's your whole package right there. Everything I just went over. You're going to make that package, articles of organization, business licenses, contractor's license, specialty licenses, certificate of insurance, workman's comp or waiver, introduction letter, list of job skills, pricing structure, and additionally insured if you have special clients that you really want to impress. So once you've got all of this together, the next thing you're going to do, now you've got a few options. The 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 base option way down here at the bottom and remember you are the architect of your own destiny the base option if you choose to architect the least is you can just shotgun email that package out to a thousand different people in your hometown out to every property management company every realtor every home builder every investor all of them <coughs> you probably will get some work if you do that but again, you have not vetted the people that you're maybe getting the work from. You don't know which of them are scammers. And believe me, guys, when it comes to realtors, when it comes to insurance guys, when it comes to some of these commercial places that are based overseas and hiring you here to work on properties that they have some kind of contract for, a lot of these guys, a lot of the new construction guys, there are a lot of people out there whose business plan is to hire a handyman and just never pay him. That happens all the time you have to be careful about who you work for so the bottom level is email it out to literally everybody if you want to go that route you can but I'm gonna tell you what my plan is what I've done and what I can tell you for a fact I have dozens upon dozens of people on this channel that have been watching me for a while that have taken this advice that have followed this system step by step and what I'm about to tell you they have done and I have had one tell me that he did not get clients the first day although when I asked him more questions about exactly what he did and how he did it he definitely did not follow this system he did a very half-assed job of following this system 
Everybody who took this seriously and did exactly what I said and put together these packages in a nice little folder. You can even get the folders that have the little cutouts so you can like stick your business card in there. Everyone who does this gets at minimum one, but typically two or three property managers right away. And this would also work for realtors and everyone else as, as well. I just happen to focus on property managers. So that's the language that you're going to hear me using. But here's what you're going to do. In fact, I'm going to show you. Let me bring up my other screen here. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Okay. There's the other screen. Get it on here. So let's go to the home screen. This is Jobber. This is what I run my business with. Uh, there's also a link in the description for Jobber. I've been running my business with it since I started this business. It's been three years now. Everything I've ever done, ever, every job, every cash job, everything this business has done is stored right here in Jobber. I have very detailed records of my entire business from day one, but I'm going to show you what I've done. Let's go to jobs, and I've got all these jobs on January 17th. I just created these today. These are all fake. These are not properties that I actually work on, nor are these property management companies. These are just autofill fake addresses for here for the city of Tucson. So I put them all under the client of property managers, and I went and I picked... So again, these are fake, but what you'll do is you'll go to Google and or Zillow, wherever you want, and start researching property management companies or realtors or investors or whomever it is you're trying to get on with. And you're going to come into Jobber and create a job for each of these. Put them all on the same day. I chose January 17th. But create a job for each of them. These aren't real jobs. These are just placeholders. Once you've got all these jobs created, all put on the same day. The next thing you're going to do, come up here to the very top right, click on this gear icon, click on settings, come over here to route optimization. It's under team organization. There's a block called route optimization. Click on route optimization. This is a very cool feature that Jobber has, especially cool if you're like a pool guy or something where you're going to be setting up lots and lots of routes and you need the shortest drive time. So here's what you're going to do is you're going to come over here. How about, so let's say you live right here. So you click on this. I don't know if y'all can read it too well, but this says start routing from here. So I'm going to click on start routing from here. And then each of these little pins is a job, which is just a property management company's address, right? So you click on that and you said start from here. And then you just start clicking on the rest of these. Click on them all. Boom, 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 boom. Now this is creating a route for you, but it's creating whatever route you've told it to create rather than the most efficient route. So now you've got this whole route created. Let's come over here and click save. I'm going to save this route. Now we can click optimize. You've used zero out of two permitted daily route optimization. So there's some limits on this because it uses a lot of AI to optimize. It's more computation uh, heavy than you might think it would be. But optimize route says optimizing will replace your current master route. Go ahead and optimize. Now this says it can take up to five to 20 minutes. Luckily it didn't. Oh, I don't know why it stuck those California jobs in here. But anyways, what this has now done is it's created the shortest path between all of these for you to drive. So you don't have to optimize. You can also just have them on the map and sort of look at them and see. But the idea is you're going to take this list that I gave you, all of this stuff that you put in this package. You're going to make these very nice little packages. You can even have some decals with your branding on the front of the folder, but you're going to have all these folders, let's say a dozen of them. You're going to pick a dozen addresses that you're going to go to on that first day. Let's get back over here. There we go. And then what you're going to do, guys, you're not going to email 
You're not going to call ahead to set up an appointment because if they don't happen to need a handyman right now, they're not going to set an appointment up with you. Or if they just don't like your voice, they're not going to set an appointment up with you. What you're going to do is you're going to pick a day, like a Wednesday, just a random middle of the week, weekday that people would normally be at work, and you're going to start driving to every single one of these properties that I just showed you on that map, whatever ones you picked in your town. And you're going to pick 9 o'clock as your start time because almost anybody who needs to go to an office for work every day is going to be there by 9 a.m. So you're going to show up to the very first one at 9 a.m. By the way, if you want to buy like some cookies or some veggie platters, something like that, a dozen of them, let's say you can get like a little box of cookies for 10 bucks, right? Go get... 12 boxes of those cookies. It's $120. Seems like a lot of money to some people, but trust me, when you can get a property manager to send you 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, $100,000 a year worth of work, that $120 customer acquisition fee that you paid by buying some cookies and putting together some folders because you understood that you are the architect of your own destiny. If you understand that and you just take a few extra steps, guys, may get some little pencils made with your branding on it. It doesn't matter. Whatever you invest is what you're going to get back out. So you're going to go to that first one at 9 a.m. When you show up, your car's going to be clean and organized, or your truck or your van. If it's your work vehicle, make sure it's clean, make sure it's organized. You're going to be clean. You're going to have a fresh haircut. You're going to be well-groomed. Your clothes are not going to be wrinkled. You're not going to smell like cigarettes. You're not going to smell like alcohol. You're not going to smell like anything other than nice. You're going to have a tape measure on your hip. You're going to have a contractor's clipboard the little aluminum one in your hand you're gonna have one of your packages slid up into there and under the little clip form you're gonna knock on that door with a big smile on your face and you're gonna introduce yourself and say hi I'm Ray Duke with such and such business and I was just wondering if I could talk to somebody here about maybe getting on your vendors list I've got a package with all my paperwork and I also brought some cookies to drop off to you guys just in case you're hungry and then you're going to go from there, guys. You're going to look them in the eyes. You're going to shake their hand firmly like a man, even if you're a woman. Shake their hand firmly like a man. They want to know who they're dealing with. Look them in the eyes. Be polite. Know the answers to all the questions. They're going to ask you about pricing structure. They're going to ask you what kinds of jobs you can do. They're going to ask you what your experience is, etc., etc. Give them the impression. This is your one opportunity to sell. And guys, if you're nervous, don't worry about it. Do the first one, be nervous, stumble through, don't impress them. Get to the second one, be a little less nervous, stumble a little less. Before you get to that 12th one, you're going to be okay. You're going to have developed a system and you're also going to have found that most of these people, they're just people and most people are pretty nice, especially people in a boring little office with nothing going on. Some new person walking in the door with a smile and with some cookies, that's just going to make them happy. So what you're going to do, first priority is to make sure they get that package. That package you put together, don't leave with that package in your hands. Make sure it stays there because one of the secrets of this is you're not necessarily trying to get them to send you work today or tomorrow or even this week. What you're trying to do is make a very good impression. The question that they're asking themselves, the property managers, homeowners, investors, everybody, contractors, it doesn't matter. The question everybody is really asking themselves in the end when they're thinking about hiring you is do I feel like I trust this person? Do I want this person in my house? Do I want this person showing up to my tenants houses that are renting that house from me? If you can make them feel like nothing more than you are a safe, non-threatening, non-drug using, non-drunk, normal, happy, polite person, you've got your foot in the door, guys. So make sure that folder stays there with them when you leave. And then after that, you're just introducing yourself and you're saying, look, here's the services I offer. Here's the experience I have. Here's the direction that I'm trying to take with this business. I would love the opportunity to do some work for you. And if you don't have any work for me today, that's 
that's perfectly okay. We've got plenty going on, but I want to have high quality clients and I've heard a lot of good things about this company and I'd just really like to get on your list of vendors. So even if you don't need me now, please just keep my information, keep me in mind. And if one of your current vendors start acting up, start dropping the ball, or maybe just can't handle one or two things that I may be able to handle, please keep me in mind. Anytime you want, you feel free to just send me a job. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's on this list, you just email that or text it to me and I'll get you taken care of right away. And then if you get to have a longer conversation with them, if you do hit it off and they enjoy talking to you and you enjoy talking to them, you can ask them a few questions like how often do they pay? And they're not going to be offended. They understand that businesses require payment for services and you're just simply asking them how often do you pay? Do you all pay out your invoices every Friday? Do you pay them on the 10th of every month? Do you try to just pay them within 10 business days of receipt? Do you pay them with a card where I send you an invoice that's, you know, like jobber here. You can pay on the job or app right there. When you send them the invoice, there's a secure payment. Do you just pay each time I do the job? Have a conversation with them, make a really good impression. And even if they don't need you now, now they will. Everyone except that one guy I told you about, a few dozen people have told me they did this and they got work and they got work right away. They got one or two or even three property managers the very first day that they went out and did this. They get, Some of them set up meetings in advance. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying you don't need to, but you will get clients. And if you don't get clients today or this week, they'll be calling you within a few weeks. And if you hit all 12, and you don't get any clients today, don't forget, you can just hit 12 more and 12 more and 12 more until you get clients. But the good thing about this is, so you can go for homeowners. This all applies to homeowners as well. They're gonna like this, but most homeowners are looking for more of a personal connection and or a personal reference from somebody who knows your work. You can break into the homeowner world for higher income homeowners, make a very good living, but you, you don't get to just start there. But right here with these other clients, you can start right there as a business charging professional wages and you can be up and running fast. Guys, when I got my first property manager, my very first like big property management company, I went from working for whomever, wherever, on whatever, to suddenly working 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and never being able to keep up with the work. Every time I knocked out another job, they sent me another job. I'd knock out twice as much the next day, they'd send me twice as much. These clients, these property managers, these are piggy banks. These are like a little machine on the wall that just prints out work orders all day long. And as fast as you can take those work orders, get them signed off, invoice, toss them back, boom, more getting printed out. So this is how you get work, guys. This is the actual answer to the question, how do I get work as a handyman? This is a guaranteed foolproof way for you to start getting work. Uh, if you don't have some capital in the bank to invest into materials and whatnot, because with most property managers, they will require you to buy the materials that you need to do the job, and then you get reimbursed for those later when they pay that invoice, which may be in a week, maybe same day, maybe in a month, you never know. It depends on how they run their business, but you can ask those questions. Something else you can ask is you can just be honest and say, hey, look, we're not a really big business yet. We don't have a lot of capital. We can carry a lot of these items that are cheaper, but for larger items, do you guys have something like a Home Depot Pro account to purchase materials off of? And if not, just let them know for bigger jobs. I may need to submit estimates for you to approve that come with deposits to at least cover the materials that I need to buy until I get the work done. But guys, this works for everybody. Property managers, realtors, investors, commercial, new construction. Uh, for homeowners, I'm going to add this right at the very end because a lot of y'all are going to start out trying to work for homeowners. The one thing I'll say not to do, actually two things I don't want you doing. I don't want you investing hundreds upon hundreds of dollars paying Google to promote a website. That's a shotgun approach. It's not a great approach for you at all. So do me a favor and don't do that. The other thing I don't want you to do is I don't want you just putting an ad on Craigslist. You're going to get a very low quality clientele there. You can get lucky every now and then. I have on Craigslist when I was very young and starting out. 
but I don't want you just putting a Craigslist ad out. I will say if you're going to use like a job finding app for handymen, uh, the two that I think sound the best from everyone I've talked to when I talk to a lot of people through this channel is Thumbtack and Nextdoor. And for me specifically, Thumbtack. The reason I like Thumbtack is I've used Thumbtack to find handymen here in Tucson to do some work for me. And a Thumbtack is, is the last time I checked, the person who's looking for a handyman doesn't have to pay, and the handyman advertising his services doesn't have to pay. I think they make their money on ads and stuff. I don't know. But what I do know is it's a very well-made website. You can list your skills very well. You can have your pictures. You can have your rates. It's a very professional place for people to go and find handymen with lots of varying levels of skill and lots of different price ranges. By the way, you can also check out what local handymen in your area are charging by going to Thumbtack and looking to see what they're trying to charge on Thumbtack. But I think that is a great place to get started. Your customers can also rate you. So don't forget at the end of your job when you do these jobs for homeowners, don't forget to ask them to rate you. Ask them, would you rate me a 10 out of 10 or a 5 out of 5 or whatever and if not what can I do to get that rating from you so that you can keep those ratings up but otherwise everything I've told you here guys this is a foolproof method this uh, this entire page right here that I've made will be available for you to download in the documents again go to the description go all the way to the bottom click on that last one for requesting documents and it'll be labeled something to the effect of how to get clients and then one last reminder um, I run my entire business with Jobber, every single bit of it, inside and out, front to back. I don't even need QuickBooks. I run everything with Jobber. My accountant has access to it. He tracks everything and takes care of that. It is amazing software. They do sponsor this channel. I am an ambassador for them because I love them so much. I've been promoting them since way before we ever had an ambassadorship or anything like that. They are the best please go to the description and get yourself a free trial. And if you don't like it, do not purchase it. I don't want anybody buying anything that they don't think is the best product for them, but I wouldn't be telling you to go there if I didn't think it was for you and for every home service-based business. So, guys, I love you. I hope you're out there killing it. I hope this video was helpful to you, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one.